Hello everyone, welcome to Creative Cove. My name is Michelle and thanks for joining me today. Uh, if you're new to my channel, welcome. Uh, the Creative Cove is all about having fun and playing with ideas and being creative with different mediums and uh, exploring our artistic talents that have yet to be discovered or to be further developed. So uh, if you like what you see, please hit the subscribe button and uh, the like and feel free to leave any comments you like and uh, I'll try and answer you as soon as I can. Um, today we are going to be playing with watercolor and some doodles. Now I have done watercolor in the past and I try to take a very loose approach to watercolors. I like that kind of look. So today I thought we would play with some daffodils. Um, I love the color yellow. It's my go-to color, yellows and browns and soft greens. Um, so the first flower I think of is a daffodil. It also reminds me of my mom, so I do love drawing and painting them. So these are a few samples of some kind of quickie, very loose watercolors. As you can see here, it's, it's very loose and lots of fun. So that's the goal for today is just to have some fun with our watercolors, something even as simple as this, where you just use the yellow alone. And uh, and then maybe we'll make a little pocket and keep some of our, our artwork in it to include in our journal. So here's a little, you've probably seen this in other videos, but uh, I just keep adding to it. <laughs> and it's, I don't have a cover or anything for it, I just keep adding. So let's get started. I'm going to take a piece of watercolor paper. Now this is out of this book here. Sorry. Uh, it's a Canson watercolor. It is 140 pound cold press. Um, it's not my favorite watercolor paper, I have to say, but it does perfect for this job and it's very affordable. So um, it's a great go-to for, for these kind of projects, especially for these little, little thumbnails here. So I am in the trailer. Um, it's very dark outside. It was sunny a minute ago, but I guess it's behind a tree now. It's moved across the sky. Um, so I will be unfortunately casting shadows with my, with my hands, but unfortunately I can't avoid that. Um, so let's do some sketching. So I'm just gonna cut, put these as a reference in front of me here so I have something to draw. And I'll, I'll put them in front too so you can see. I'm just going to duplicate the drawing I did, maybe do a little modification. So I am using a graphics line marker, a 0 0.05, so it's extremely fine, fine point. Um, it's a nice little sketching marker. And it is permanent, So, but what's nice is it doesn't bleed uh, when you wet it. So I start with the little trumpet, if my pen will work. Oh, geez, it's dried out on me. Really? There we go. I had to put a little, little push in it. I just start with a wiggly line, and that's the opening of the trumpet. And then I give it a kind of, I think the marker is drying out, a little curve on the side, and then a little line coming out. So this is obviously the center of the flower. This is the tube coming out here. And then we want to build the outside of the tube. So I'm going to sketch relatively quickly and you can slow this video down or speed it up however you want. Now I like a lot of sketching in my watercolor but if you like it nice and clean then you're going to want to either use pencil where you can erase it or just stick to simple outline drawing. So there's the one petal coming out the back. I'm going to do another petal coming here, another one here, another one here, here, and an indication of one behind the trumpet. All right, now I'm just gonna give it a little bit of texture. So I like to use the veining. I pull just a little bit of ruffle by using these contour lines and pulling away from the center. So then I have to figure out where my stem would come out. So the stem would come right through the center of the flower here and come out the other side. So I'm just gonna Give it that little, it's got that kind of papery brown thing around the top and then the green stem. So there's our little daffodil. So we can do another one. Let's do another one over here so we can paint two. And uh, we'll just kind of make this one up, I think. Yeah, we'll just make it up. So I'm gonna do one that 
kind of pulls away from me. So here's the ruffle trumpet. So I'm looking at it from a side profile. So here's the opening. And then the trumpet comes down like this. Let me give that a bit more of a wiggle. And then the petal. And this one I'm going to make one of those long, skinny petals. And another long, skinny petal. And they all come from the center here. Another one. Just kind of give it a little wiggle, some character. A little indication of one over here. Another one over here. And the sixth one is behind this, so we don't see it. And again, the stem coming down, we'll go right through here and down here like this. So let's do maybe one quick um, piece of, what is that called? Uh, I'm trying to think what that's called, not a stem, a, a leaf. So they have these very pointy leaves, but they can they can bend, so we'll bend one just for fun and it cross over itself. So there's that. And then for this one, maybe we will add another one coming up. I don't wanna add too much because we do wanna paint it, but we'll do a flower that hasn't quite opened yet. Sorry, I'm trying to concentrate on the drawing and talk at the same time. <laughs> So again, if you want to draw these along with me, just slow the video down. You can hit the speed there and change it up. So we have one open, we have one opening, and then we can do maybe one leaf. So you look overall composition wise. So I think I might add one more thing coming out here like this, another leaf, just for some interest. All right, so I'm going to re-sketch a little more after. Right now I want to tape it down. So I'm going to use some painter's tape that I have somewhere. There it is. And then we'll have some fun painting. So the idea is just to stay loose and relax. Try not to think you're going to make, you know, a masterpiece right off the bat. Just if you set yourself up for wanting to make a masterpiece, then you have to be in the right mindset to, uh, to really concentrate on what you're doing and um, really focused and kind of plan it out, especially with watercolor. But this is really loose and easy. And sometimes you can really surprise yourself with the cool effects in the end. And that's my kind of watercolor. I just love to have fun slapping the paint down, loose, having fun, splattering it, and creating these tiny little mini adorable little paintings that I can include into my into my journals. All right, so I'm just, it's not a very good painter's tape, so I wouldn't be surprised if it leaks a bit, but there we go, it's down. So I'm gonna use my trusty Winsor & Newton pack here, my travel pack that I've always used. I've got my cup of water, I've got my paper towel, and I've got a very cheapy, uh, dollar store brush. I don't even think it has a name. I can't even read it. But anyways, it's not a good brush. It's just a cheap brush. Uh, I do recommend a good watercolor brush if you're really going to get into watercolors, but for today, we're just going to have some fun. So I am going to just throw some yellow on. So this yellow, I believe, would be cadmium yellow because it is a pretty intense yellow. And I'm just going to throw it loosely onto the yellow part of the flower. And why I like to do two sketches is watercolor, you can have a lot of fun playing with it while it's wet and playing with it when it's dry. So this one I'm gonna approach more of a wet on dry when this one I'm gonna approach more of a wet on wet. So right now I'm just gonna put, and I know it's hard to see, but I'm gonna put the water, just water, all the way around the background. I'm not putting it anywhere on the leaves or on the flower. I'm just wetting the background paper. And I want to play with throwing some colors into this negative space. 
and loosening up even more. You can see I move pretty quick. Try not to overthink it. I'm just thinking about the approach I might have. So this one I think is Syrian blue would be my guess. And it's mixed with a little bit of Payne's gray that's still in there. And I'm gonna throw it down and you can see how the water kind of grabs the color and does this really fun pooling effect. So I'm gonna throw that color all into the wet paint. I'll move this off my, hopefully the palette is still in view. I'm just gonna throw it in nice and loose. And if you don't wanna draw, you can always stamp your own uh, image here. You just want to use an ink that is permanent and won't bleed when you add water to it. So don't feel like you have to have to uh, draw something if you're in, a little intimidated to to draw. You can always use a stamp or transfer paper and, and trace something on. So I'm going to go into what I believe is yellow ochre here. I'm going to throw a little bit of that in there. I'm just going to give me a greeny color. I'm going to throw that kind of muddy color in. No idea what the end result's going to look like. But I'm excited. I'm excited because I don't know. And I find when I paint, it never ends up um, the way I expect it to look. Which is fun. So let's go back to this guy. We will let that kind of pool and settle a bit. And let's see what we can do here. So I think maybe we'll keep it relatively simple. So I'd like to go into um, this yellow ochre into my cadmium. And I'm just going to put a little bit more of a richer yellow, deeper yellow, in some of the darker parts of the flower. So wherever the flower would kind of be in a little bit of shade, you know, the water, the, the light doesn't penetrate easy in the center. It's going to hit the outskirts of the, the flower. So the darker ochre color can go in there. And as you can see, I'm not a watercolor artist. Like there's probably watercolor artists that might be watching this going, what is she doing? <laughs> but the goal is just to have fun. I'm not, um, not stressing about it. So I'm going to roll off the, um, the wet and I'm just going to run my, brush down and this must this brush must have some natural hairs of some kind in it because it does lift the paint now uh, like my experience is if it's a natural fiber brush it will do this and if it's a synthetic brush it won't do that uh, so if it doesn't do it with your brush you can always just use the corner of your paper towel to absorb where you don't want that color i think i'm going to go into this kind of greeny Payne's gray color we got going on here and add even one more shade just for some drama let's see let's see if we like it throw a little bit in here and then maybe splatter a little while I have that color and I just hit it with my finger and then I'm going to go into this pretty olive green I don't know the actual name sorry it's a very beautiful green it's one of my favorites. Pull those stems. And again, this is uh, wet on dry right now. And I think while this is still a bit wet, I'm going to paint those stems in green and see if it pulls the green into some of the background while it's wet. So watercolor is a really fun way to experiment with uh, different techniques and working with wets and dries and the effects you can get. So I really like the loose, the way this water pools is, is just one of my favorites. So I find there's a lot of negative space here. So I think what we'll do is maybe just add one more. Um, we need something here. So maybe another flower coming over. So maybe down here. We have one that's starting to open. So I'm just going to do some roughly kind of indication here. And then it has that brown wrapped casing that goes into the stem. I just feel like there's too much negative space here. I mean, you can always cut it shorter, but while we have it, 
let's do it and then maybe one more leaf there we go so this is the darker green wrap that by accident with the olive green here so throw that in and again not even staying in the lines just having fun and let's go into this yellow and then I'll do some yellow ochre with this Payne's gray and Sir I think it's Syrian blue and just do that darker kind of the bit that wraps around I don't know what it's called but it's it's kind of got um a sheeting to it that kind of cover encases the flower before it opens so I kind of like this little dotted effect of of the darker colors it could probably be a little bit smoother in transition but we can always play with that and the um the pen after I just don't want to go too dark and keep it wet and then like I said use your paper towel and you can remove some of it just to keep it bright lots of fun let's splatter some yellow let's splatter yellow over here while it's wet see what we get so while it's wet it will have a much softer effect than when it's dry How fun will these be to add in a botanical journal? And you can scan these and photocopy these so you get more than one use out of them, which I do a lot with my work. Okay, let's go into that greeny brown color and I want to add it to here and to here. It's a nice color. And now I'm going to paint the yellow. I'm just going to throw it in. I think what I'll do, actually, sorry, is I'm going to wet the flower. Even if the background's still wet, I don't mind it bleeding together. So sometimes uh, it's nice to keep control of the water paint, the watercolor, and sometimes it's fun to just lose control with it, see what it does on its own, especially in the beginning phases of learning watercolor. It's really fun to be experimental allow yourself to make those mistakes because sometimes they can yield some really fun results. Just adding some yellow here. Maybe go back into the blue. Let's clean. I only have this tiny little palette, so I'm just going to clean this center one out. Use a little bit of paper towel and clean that out. And let's do some blue in there. This one, so I think it could be Prussian blue not sure I lost my little legend a long time ago so maybe let's splatter some of that and see if I can grab some of this Payne's gray that's sitting in the corner here there's no Payne's gray in this palette so I just kind of add it I like the contrast with the Payne's gray kind of just like that on its own now the dilemma is letting it dry. <laughs> That's where I run out of patience. But you can see there's some really, there's two different styles where you have a little bit more control with working the wet on the dry. Um, and then you have a very loose approach by working the wet on the wet. So it really depends what you like to play with. If you're more meticulous and you like control, then the wet on, the wet on dry might be more for you. Um, and if you're more apt to just go in for it and see where it takes you, then the wet on wet can be a lot of fun. The thing with the wet on wet is you, you can lose control pretty quick um, and it can get muddy pretty fast, but that's how you're going to learn, right? Like it's just, it's just so much fun to experiment with that. All right. I got to let this dry. Otherwise um, <laughs> we'll never get to uh, keep sketching it. But I, I wish I had like one of those speed up, kind of fast forward type editing things so I could move forward for you, but I don't. And I'm scared to um, use my pen unless it's dry. So what I'm gonna do is I am just gonna lift some of the color just so it dries a bit quicker, which is something I don't wanna do 
because I'm going to lose that strong effect, but I want to make sure that we can make something out of this today. So as you can see, it pulled almost all the color off, which has a nice effect too. So if you really wanted this to pop even more, I would darken the background a bit with some more blue, but we're going to move forward with the sketching. Now, obviously you have to like the sketched look. Uh, not everybody does, uh, but I do like to add more details with my sketches once I'm finished painting and I don't I don't redraw everything but I like to pull out some details and really kind of pop some of the the shadows and the layers so don't spend hours doing it and it does have to be dry but I like to put a little bit of weight at the bottom by adding some dark And then kind of just putting some, again, this is wet, so it's not really working. And it's dried out my marker. I'm not sure where the rest of my markers are. Oh, well. That's how it goes when you're filming. Things don't work. <laughs> you start and then discover that you can't finish. So I don't know where I've put my pens. I'm sorry. But anyways, we did a little bit of sketching. We'll keep this one nice and neat. So actually, while we play with this one, I will add a little bit more of that splatter and let it, it, it will give it time to dry. I can get my watercolors open. So I'm going to try and grab that Payne's Gray again and add some contrast here. All right. So pull the tape off carefully. And like I said, I have cheap tape, so you have to watch that you don't your paper which is quite easy to do <coughs> excuse me allergy season is starting yay <coughs> hmm I got tickle in my throat all right here we go there's our two little very different looks that we got going on but still quite pretty quite elegant fun to do just gonna move this out of the way. <clears throat> I'll move it in closer here because that, that's as close as my camera goes, especially with the shadows right now. So there's the little sketched approach. So dry, uh, wet on dry technique and wet on wet technique. So two very different looks, but a lot of fun. So let's maybe make an envelope with it, right? Let's do some ephemera. So I have this uh, manila piece left over and I think we'll just do a um another little excuse me <coughs> excuse me another little uh journal card maybe with what I've got I don't have too many supplies out right now but I have my sewing machine and hopefully she works and a little bit of lace and so let's see what we can do and I have some scissors so maybe we'll just make a journal card as opposed to a full envelope so this is just a scrap and hopefully it fits. So this is still a little wet, so we'll be careful. And I'm just gonna wing it and do it as straight as I can. So we can throw it on this side, I think. That works. So we'll cut up the seam here. Up this edge I like that. Simple. Do we want a little more contrast? I have music note paper and I have this green file folder. I love these green file folders. I think the green just really sings. I use them a lot. So there's that option or the brown. I think I like the green. So we can do a nice little layered, make our work of art, the little focal point. So I'm just gonna sew this right on and then I'll come around and trim. Do I wanna put the lace on there too? It could be kind of fun. All right, let's throw that in. 
So we can make it a pocket here. I don't have my hole punch where I can make a, a nice little indication, but that's okay. But what I do like to do is I like to add some ink to the edges so the layers pop out away from each other and it kind of shows off all the work you've done when you put the contrast together so bear with me i'm just gonna this is that distressed outside vintage photo i like the uh the corduroy one but i can't seem to find it i've misplaced it somewhere so we'll go with vintage photo which is a nice contrast between the soft colors and the dark ink Okay, so what I'm going to do is sew around. Now, do we want to make a pocket? Ooh, do we? Maybe I'll clean out this edge in case we do. And as you can see, I don't cut anything straight. I just kind of wing it. technically make two pockets three pockets two pockets so you make one with this and one with your work of art let's do it let's make that many pockets so I'm going to try and move my sewing machine in and not that I think you can actually see anything because of the angle but at least you don't just see my arms <laughs> all right I have a very, very small table. So what I'm gonna do, I think, is just sew down the edge here to start because I'm not actually gluing anything, but this will probably shift on me a little bit, but we'll create those pockets. And I'm just gonna use a zigzag stitch right through the two. Find my little foot here. that side so that's a pocket that's a pocket so I'm going to do the bottom here and then maybe add the lace to the end Oops. The fell off. so now I'm going to spin it hopefully you can see a little bit of what I'm doing. It's hard to see in this light, I'm afraid. I move the stitching over to the back. Ooh, there we go. And then we'll sew this part. Move it over a little bit more. There we go. Try and get it all lined up. Okay, so now I can show you what I did. Put this big guy out the way again. All right, so now we have a pocket and a pocket. That's kind of cute. And we can even keep this bit and glue it in as a fold out if we wanted, but I'm not going to. I'm just gonna chop it off, clean up this lace a little bit. Chop it off right here. Trim down the bottom. Now, if I had nice writing or write, write the word daffodil across here or something on a on a piece of uh, manila and just write daffodil, that'd be nice. But I uh, I don't have nice writing, so I'll have to print the word. <laughs> I'll cheat and print it. All right, so there we go. We've got that, which can just be a journal card, or you can turn it into a, a folder. Do something like this maybe, and glue it on there, or sew it back on, and then it becomes a folder, whatever you, whatever you wanna do. I'm gonna leave it like that for now, because I don't want the video too long, and uh, grab my book that fell. <laughs> the stuff fell out. Yeah. Oh, there we go.
we go. So I have uh, this one that we did, that one I did before, and then I just throw this stuff in all over. So we got this guy, and now we have this pretty green one to add. We can put it anywhere we want. Of course, this book's getting getting pretty thick. But just to show you how you can have fun with watercolor and relatively quick, simple, inexpensive ways to play and have fun, stay loose, experiment, and turn your work into some really beautiful, unique ephemera. So I hope you like that video. I hope it inspires you. Um, I do have other videos where I do teach how to sketch some of these things. If you wanted to take a slower process and a slower approach to the actual drawing part, um, please feel free to check those out. And I uh, hope to see you again soon. Take care, everyone. Bye.